it left Jerusalem as a belief system, went to Greece, became a philosophy, went to Rome, became an institution, came to America, became a business. Welcome to Radical Radio with Robbie Dawkins. Robbie is a renowned speaker and equipper in over 70 countries, as well as author of international best-selling book, Do What Jesus Did. Here's your host, Robbie Dawkins. Welcome to Radical Radio. I'm Robbie Dawkins. And man, I am super stoked and pumped. And you better get there too, because we are going on a ride today. <laughs> this is my friend, John Rutke. And man, he is... This, it, Write the name down, remember it, because you're not going to want to forget it. And right now, do yourself a big favor, just click like and share immediately, because what's coming out of this, man, you're going to want to share, and you're going to like a Thank lot. Thank you, Lord. Praise and, the Lord. Uh, and he's, he's a, somebody I saw about 15 years ago, I get, no, good grief, longer than that. Uh, I saw a program that was on the life, uh, supposedly, sort of, of Lonnie Frisbee, and uh, watched, and I remember your parts of that were, for me, the most gripping parts, mm. and you were just talking about it, you were Lonnie's roommate, mm. well, you're going to get into that, sharing us how yeah. that happened, Yeah. but as I was watching, I was like, man, this guy's got something to say, and I could feel the anointing on you, mm. I could feel God's anointing power on you just oh, in the thanks, bits Robert. you were saying yeah and and it really it really it caught my attention it gripped my heart and mm. and so i'm super stoked to have you on bro thanks for coming <laughs> thanks robbie all the way Such from san diego a, come on man. baby you know yeah. we just have to bring it that's yeah, that's, we just bring that's it all. That's what we do. That's yeah, what that's, we do. that's exactly how it is. And so, and and so, today's going to be a great program. As I said, seriously, like it, share it, get it out because you're people need to hear from this man, and and a lot more people are going to start hearing from you. I know that yeah. from what the Lord's showing me in my heart. But can you just tell us, first of all, your story? You know, how did you come to Christ? I grew up in Washington D.C. area, actually in Maryland, but you know I always say D.C. because people don't know where Maryland is, <laughs> and so I hitchhiked across the country as a Buddhist. Wow! I told my mom, "Mom, I'm going to California, Southern California, and I was going to go actually play football at a college, you know." And so uh, I hitchhiked across the country. Uh, you know, I'm stopping off along the way, just meeting people, and it come to around Nebraska. People are picking me up, and they're believers in Jesus. Mm. And I'm just going, man, these people are super nice. You know, wow. When I went down to Southern California, ultimately where I was heading, uh, it, it impacted me enough to go to the Buddhist temple and go talk to those monks. Mm. So I said, hey, listen, I'm running into people called born-again Christians. They said, oh, born-again Christians, very persuasive, stay away. I'm going, dude, Wow. No. Uh, I have to put all my spirituality on this shelf because I got to make this football team. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pay for this thing, you know? <laughs> so that's kind of what I did. Yeah. And, you know, we were partying hard. You know, my roommate was dealing drugs. We were, you know, we were at the epicenter of this whole thing and, of uh, you know, just just in the throes of this whole thing. It was, it was really a super fun time and a super alive time. And, uh, you know, but... I'll tell you, about a year into that, I was a religious studies major. I was asking the deep, deep questions like Pascal. You mm. know, girls weren't doing it. Drugs weren't doing it. I'm going, this void is so deep. Uh, I, I, as I'm walking up there, I had this conversation with God of the universe. God, I don't know you. You need to tell me who you are. Mm. It was just that simple. Such a good question. Yeah, so mm. I, I'm, I'm up there, and I'm hanging with my boys. I see this guy walking across the campus. Guy's like a nerd, got pencils in his pocket, horn room glasses, and he's walking towards me. Like, I'm just going, this dude is about ready to violate my space. <laughs> and this guy comes up to me, and he says, it's Jesus. That's who you're looking for. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah. And the guy so led me good. to the Lord on four spiritual laws. Wow. In front of all my friends. Wow. Now, those guys, and he didn't know, I just had that conversation with the God of the universe. And so I, I walked up that day a Buddhist. I walked down that day a Christian. Mm. So I hitchhiked back home. Like I left, everybody yeah. was a Buddhist. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, man, I was, I'm an evangelist at heart, you know, oh, just yeah. getting my, whatever I'm doing, I want them to do, you know? Yeah. So I hitchhiked back, let everybody to the Lord, everybody who picked me up, dude, you're coming in. That's it. You know, the final guy that picked me up to take me home stayed with me for a week at my mom's house. And I just preached the gospel, brought the whole family together and said, guys, so sorry. We made a wrong turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Jesus. It's not, they said, what? Are you a Jesus freak? I said, I'm not sure about the freak part, but I'm definitely with Jesus. Yeah. And they all came to the Lord. Man, so um, good. Yeah, all my friends, everybody yeah. came to Jesus. And when they go through this period sort of shortly after that mm -hmm. where you're you're coming out of this wounded relationship thing yeah and you're looking for a place to live right yeah uh, and and this yeah. is where you meet Lonnie yeah you know? and yeah so tell us about, about well that. so what happens is so I went through a very difficult time uh but so I led my whole family to the Lord came back I felt a call to ministry mm. so I quit everything on secular school and went into at Melody Land School of Theology and went through a really difficult season in my life at that time. And uh, I needed a roommate because mm -hmm. I was leaving the place that I was living at, and I, I was really going through some very painful things. And, uh, you know, this is like 1979, and so my, my friend, who was also a student there, you know, he was one of the smarter guys that, that was in my school, and uh, I, he said, hey, I'm looking for a roommate. So we collaborated, had dinner that night, and. He's telling me all about this guy, Lonnie Frisbee. Mm. He said, well, you know, he started Calvary Chapel. He was, uh, well, the catalyst for Calvary Chapel, and God really used him in the Jesus movement, and I knew who he was. Mike and I are having dinner, and he says, man, you need to meet my friend Lonnie. I said, okay, let's go see Lonnie. You know, so I go over to his house. It's, uh, you know, like in the middle of the hood in Santa Ana, in mm. like kind of the ghetto-y part where all the heroin addicts are, you know? And there we are. I open up the door, and it's this old uh, kind of cottagey kind of a house, and it's filled with easels, half-done paintings, full-done paintings, uh, books. I see, you know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Watchman Nee books. You know, I'm just going, yeah. oh, yeah, man, I'm feeling this. This is like a, whoa, I, 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 it's bohemic. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm like an old hippie. This guy's a, this guy knows how to make an atmosphere of that. And Lonnie comes walking through, so that's when I met Lonnie. You know, and Lonnie said, "So, uh, hey, I'm Lonnie. What what's happening? You know?" And I'm looking at him, and he's like small. Lonnie's yeah. like five, six, seven. You know, something like that. Small guy. And I'm looking at him after all everything Mike had told me about Lonnie. And he looks at me and he says, hey, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Dude, this guy's reading my mind, you know. So I kind of, uh, and Lonnie, but Lonnie started to minister to me and, you know, just talking through stuff. And, man, I felt something really mm. be healed inside of my heart, you know. And we had this moment together. And the next day, had all my stuff, <laughs> knock on his door. I'm your new roommate. <laughs> so for the next like eight years, Lonnie and I traveled together all over the world. Yeah. And, you know, saw a lot of things happen. That Tell was us really about some of that. What were because you know, one of the things that I was that was frustrating for me mm -hmm. is that in the uh Jesus Revolution movie, which again we're encouraging people yes, to see. We're not yes, criticizing yes. it no, all. No, not at all. However, it does it it shows Lonnie praying for several people, but but not showing anybody get healed. Man. And and that's that's so drastically different from where yeah. Calvary's theology is. Yeah. However, Lonnie was the opposite of that. Lonnie was this catalyst and this, you know, there was something on his life that saw these incredible things happen. What what were some of that? What was that like? God really used Lonnie to, you know, lot of word of knowledge in that time period. Yeah. You know, and he moved in that pretty well. Uh, and moved with great power, mm. and pretty much you were getting baptized in the Holy Spirit for sure in that yeah. group, in that time period, and certainly when I was with Lonnie. Yeah. You, were, you were going to have an encounter with Jesus as the baptizer in the Holy yeah. Spirit, Come and on. you were going to have an encounter with Jesus as a healer, 
and you were going to have an encounter with Jesus as a deliverer. Yeah. Well, and I saw Lonnie move in that. Yeah. With great, great authority and power. I saw another big wave in 1980 mm. with Lonnie. Yep. And that was with, uh, we were circling the camp of a church called Calvary Chapel, Yorba Linda. So I said, hey, wh what's happening? Yeah. What is gripping you like this? And she said that God is showing us that there's an explosion about ready to happen over this church. Mm. But there's a cork in the bottle of the neck of that. What's going to happen? And I asked her, what, what is it? She said, pastor. Mm. You know, and... Uh, Which would have been John Wimber. It would have been John yeah. Wimber. And mm -hmm. I didn't know John at that time. Sure. You know? So, I mean, I just was watching from a... Pl him on, from a pl uh, part of the congregation. Next thing I know, man, Lonnie and I are in his backyard at a barbecue. Mm -hmm. And there's Bob and Penny and the whole staff and Sam Thompson and, yeah, uh, you know, just great. Oh, man, such cool people. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, I was just going, wow, these are awesome people. And uh, so they're all laughing. And, man, Lonnie, we see you circling the camp. Lonnie, we've decided we're going to have you do Mother's Day. And, you know, we're, we're just excited to hear what you got to say. I'm going, oh, boy. <laughs> I, I, I remember walking along the side of John's house, and I said, Lonnie, these people have no idea what they're asking for. Lonnie says, no, I'm going to behave myself. I'm not going <laughs> to screw this up. You know, I said, okay, well, we'll see how that goes. And the rest is history. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because when Lonnie, they invited Lonnie to, to go do this, it was like, uh, you know, people hear Lonnie's going to speak, you know, so it draw that, that just in itself is a draw. So about 400 people show up. And we, and in Mother's Day, in that day, you were there that night, right? Uh-uh. I, I came. No, yeah, I had to came, come the, so next came day. the next day. Yeah, because Lonnie night, says, heard, get up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we've heard people who've talked about that it just was, you know, Lonnie, it's, it's, it's really one of the only times that we ever hear him say those words, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, come. Yes. And he's doing that. Do you think he's doing that as a response to what these intercessors are saying of, the bottleneck is kind of preventing this. Yes, I. And I, I don't want to put words in their mouth. No, but. no. I, I I appreciate you even bringing that uh, to that kind of perspective, uh, Robbie. Because li listen, I think that the fear of man has moved the church more than the fear of God. Lonnie, Agreed, man. Yeah. Lonnie threw caution to the wind all the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this. Not many wise, not many noble. Mm, come on. I mean, Lonnie, he would not be the guy you would choose to lead the charge. Yeah, come on. He just wasn't. You know, I, I mean, I wouldn't pick him on my team, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and yet, yet he was the, he had this anointing. But God did. God did. And man, I'm thanking God that I had Lonnie in my life too. Yeah, come you on. You know, I mean, God really used Lonnie for me. But anyways, when it came to that, um, he, th he would throw caution to the wind and he would lose himself. Yeah. And the Spirit of God would come with such great power and great anointing. Yeah. And through a broken vessel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, listen, we're hearing all the stories of, you know, yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 uh, refer back to my video and you can hear yeah. all, the whole story of Lonnie. In, in that day, in mm -hmm. Mother's Day, mm -hmm. 1980, yeah. there's this incredible visitation. He calls the young people forward. Yeah. And then says, the Holy Spirit's coming on you. And he yeah. says, come Holy Spirit. Right. So this is Lonnie really saying. And I never heard anybody say that. No, I don't think anybody did before yeah. that time. Yeah. And then this, but this is Lonnie saying, the Holy Spirit hasn't been welcomed here. So I'm going to welcome him here. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Total, I don't want to totally. put words in your no, mouth. No, 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 totally. You know, and the thing is this, most people don't know the Holy Spirit's a person. Yes. He's not an it. That's He's it. not come an on. entity. Yeah. He's a person. And so on this day, this visitation hits, they don't know what to do. Oh, my goodness. They, that, we had to have a special meeting, Robbie, the next day. What did that look like? Oh, yeah. I mean, people erupted in tongues. They weren't that tongues. happy. People yeah. erupted speaking in tongues. Yeah. There was... And so the next day, we're having like this gathering at the Wagner House, which was like the ministry house at, that uh, the Calvary Chapel Your Belinda had soon to become the vineyard. Yeah. And so that was... Uh, you know, half the group happy, half the group not happy. Yeah. 
People were like, man. And that's usually how it goes, about half and half. It's just what it is, man. You know, and so I was next to the guy that's not happy. Mm-hmm. You know, he looked like a nuclear physicist, you know, his foot stepping and, uh, you know, uh, the little pencil neck just ruined my, you know, our church, you know, like there's about 70 of us in there. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, I, you know, so John. Was Wimber happy? Or was Wimber he nervous? was sweating. Yeah. <laughs> he says, well, we've got Lonnie here. Let's let Lonnie, Lonnie, hey, share what what's going on. You know, like, yeah. just, and Lonnie kicked off his flip-flops. Okay, now that's it just goes from bad to worse. <laughs> and he burped in the microphone because he had stomach problems. He said, oh, excuse me. Burp. You know, I'm going, oh, boy. And then the more he started talking, the stupider it got. Yeah. I'm just going, this is horrible. Yeah. We're, if it was a, like a 10, this was negative 7, we're going, and we're plummeting. Yeah. And the more he talked, the more I'm just, it's not connecting, you know? And so the Wimber is of the world sweating the bullets, you know? Come on, yeah. So John steps up and he says, what I think Lonnie's trying to say is this, you know? And Lon- John was very eloquent and very articulate. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's putting context in, in scriptures and all that kind of stuff to it. And he says, I think that's more or less what Lonnie's trying to say. Lonnie steps up. It's like, what? And this is the... This is how he is, man. He just, like, that's not at all what I'm trying to say. <laughs> he says, what I'm trying to say is, he, you need to repent, and you need for the Holy Spirit to come upon you, so and good. you need to have an encounter with God. Wham! The power of God fell on all of us. Wow. I mean, the nuclear physicist guys, rolling under my feet. <laughs> This is where I think they get the term holy roller, man. I never seen it. I mean, I had to jump up and as this guy's rolling under me and yeah, everybody's weeping and wailing. So I'm just good, going, man. what just hit us? I mean, for hours. Out of all this, again, came these signs and wonders. Oh, big line. time. What, and, and what question I've ha- that I have too with that, because I want to hear some of those stories, yeah. but with that, was Lonnie just doing this in the church, or was he doing it on the streets too? Did you see him in the public? Did yeah. You see- we were in this place one time. I remember we walked in, and uh, this woman went like this. Oh, we were, we were getting uh, something to eat, and we're in this restaurant, and the, the, the waitress says, oh, like this. And the waitress said, Lonnie said, what's the matter? She says, I have these sinus things that go into my, up into my, like a migraine inside my head. She says, you know, I... And this is in front of everybody at the restaurant. I pray for people sometimes and stuff happens. <laughs> says, what does that mean? Says, you'll find out. Lays hands on this, woman, this waitress. Boom, the power of God hits this girl. She's just like going, whoa, place complete silence. I remember Ken Fish, our mutual friend of ours, yes. uh, said that he brought his mother to the vineyard because uh, he heard, you know, some, she had heard people were getting healed there or something like that. And yeah. he went and Lonnie looked and she had these black lesions on her tongue and yeah. on her gums mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And they didn't mm-hmm. know what it was. The doctors couldn't figure it out. Mm-hmm. And Lonnie just looked at her and he goes, I see that foul demon in the name <laughs> of Jesus come out and boom. Yeah. They, they just disappeared. Yeah. Disappeared in her yeah. mouth. Yeah. Uh, other people were just on the beach, a blind man. Yeah. They had, were at, at Calvary chapel mm-hmm. and, Somebody said, we need to get healed. And they said, oh, well, that guy's down at the beach because Lonnie was always down mm-hmm. there evangelizing mm-hmm. and sharing the gospel yeah. and went down and he just looks at him and he says, in the name of Jesus, you can see. Mm-hmm. And then the guy gets his sight back. That and happened in Africa too. Yeah. Yeah. We would but see a lot of What was some of that in Africa? Uh, when- I, I, well, it was just, it was so overwhelmingly powerful. Yeah. And um, it was almost like... I mean, we were in some meetings where the presence and power of God came so intensely. Mm. Honestly, it was fearful. I was, I didn't want to step out. I didn't want to touch anything. Yeah, because the power and the presence of God was so intense. You know, I was thinking, man, this is Ananias and Sapphira time. If we don't Ooh, yeah. be careful here, you know, like getting back again to this thing with Lonnie. Mm-hmm. You know, he he had some. He had some falls. He had some uh, some encounters with same sex relationships mm-hmm, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Would Lonnie say he was gay? Would no. Lonnie say he was a practicing homosexual? Never. 
No. He and do and that. these people who are saying this, it really bothers me because yeah, I know that that would be too. Lonnie's answer. He me would too. never say that. Yeah. And 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 he wasn't he, he but he had he had falls, you know. Yes. He had he had struggles yes. Yes. because of the sexual abuse that we heard from Stan in the previous segment. Yeah. You know, going through that. Yeah, and you can and you can link on to mine. Yeah. And I can I read that chapter. Yeah. No. You, you know, so we, you know, I, and let me just say this. And he um, clearly stated this. Clearly is stated, you know, listen. What do you think Lonnie would say right now about everybody looking into him? Because this movie, you know, it's really Greg Laurie's testimony. Yeah. But everybody, like the search engines are kind of blowing up of people going, tell me more about Lonnie. Right. What would you think he would say to people who were doing that or or how, how would he respond to the news of hearing that would you think yeah you i mean know, we know he's in the cloud of witnesses yeah sort of right right for if, sure if, yeah no, no doubt you know it's it's so funny uh i was actually talking to my wife about this i said you know lonnie's words coming from the grave are more powerful than when mm. he was alive so these words are coming very strong and very powerful because there's a focus on who he is yeah. right now I mean, this moment, or capture, trying to capture this moment. And I think Lonnie would be astounded. Mm. And I think that he would be going, you go, John, you go, man. Tell him the truth. Don't let anything. <laughs> I think that's where, you know, yeah. like, I, I would think that's where Lonnie's head would be at. Yeah. Say, Tell him the full counsel of God. You know, so good. don't hold anything back. In recapping two from Stan Frisbee, John's mm -hmm. or uh, Lonnie's brother, uh, some of the wounds that had happened with his own father feeling rejected, getting the, his mom and dad getting divorced at an early age, mm -hmm. and then his uh, stepfather uh, not feeling like he could measure up. Uh, he was uh, sort of a you know square peg in a round hole with the family, mm -hmm. and just feeling this sense of rejection, sense of woundedness. And it really appears to me in looking at everything that John was really looking for a father. Yeah. He really hungered for a father. Yeah. When, when Chuck Smith came along, now he probably got that from the guys in the big house a little bit, yeah. uh, you know, in San Francisco, you know, as a yeah. new believer. Yeah. But then coming into meeting Chuck Smith, you know, here was somebody that was recognizing a gift of God on Lonnie. Mm -hmm that was uh, making room for it. Uh, not so much maybe the Sunday services, but Wednesday night mm -hmm. making room for Lonnie to preach. And by the way, these meetings would just, everybody I've talked to, they would just pack out. Pack out, man. I mean, people people hanging in the windows. Mm -hmm. People like, like they, would just, they just packed out. And then they moved to a tent, and then Chuck did something interesting. He, he stopped letting Lonnie pray for people publicly, but moved him behind a a you know a a, 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 a curtain mm -hmm. uh, to do ministry because uh, God got kind of unpredictable. Yeah, you didn't know how the Lord was going to show up, and yeah. even even <laughs> had uh, threatened Lonnie. Debbie told us that he had threatened Lonnie that if you that if anybody falls out, you're fired, man. You yeah. know because he didn't want to see that in Calvary Chapel, mm -hmm. and yet. This great move of God sparked from all these incredible signs and wonders, mm -hmm. things of the spirit that were happening. That's right. But yet it was, it, Lonnie was personally feeling rejected, but I imagine too, I can't speak for him totally, but I imagine the Holy Spirit was feeling a bit rejected yeah. in all of that. And yeah. then coming into the Mother's Day 1980, well, he had had, had a time with Bob Mumford in Florida with the shepherding movement. Mm -hmm which was a very heavy hand. I, I, had, I had been a part of that in, in growing up and extremely heavy handed and extremely controlling. controlling. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Total control. Yeah. Um, and, and he felt it got uneasy there was trying to repair his marriage, mm -hmm. which did not survive mm -hmm. uh, his marriage with Connie. And then coming into mother's day, 1980 uh, with John Wimber and, and, also, again, looking for another father. And I think he felt a, well, maybe at this time I'll get it the third time, mm -hmm. you know, with John. But then, um, you know, Chuck Smith Jr. actually says that he's the one who told uh, John about Lonnie's falls mm -hmm. uh, with same-sex relationships. And that, at, that ended up uh, making John very uncomfortable and not, not sure what to do. And of course, in that time period, let's just say, yeah, you have, you have to put it in context. Yeah. You know? And, and, 
the context is Lonnie's 19 and he's pastoring 500 people. Yeah, come on. Yeah, okay, wow. like by the time he's 22, he's the face of the Jesus movement. Yeah. I mean, Time Magazine, all these places that have uh, were coming, or all these people coming from all different places to, and it was Lonnie that was at the epicenter of this whole thing. Yeah. Again, if you you don't have Lonnie, you don't have the Jesus movement. <laughs> well, and even yeah. in the Jesus Revolution film, yeah. you it's it's Greg Laurie's story and his mm -hmm. testimony, mm -hmm. but Lonnie's the key figure. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it he's, really he's at the epicenter for yeah, sure. Yeah, he really you really see Chuck catching mm -hmm. the move, mm -hmm. but Lonnie is this. It, you know, and some people have even called Lonnie. I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this because I feel he was way more than this. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have said, yeah, he was the spark plug for those. And I'm like, mm, I think he was the spark plug, the jet fuel. Yeah. I think yeah. he was way more yeah. than just a spark plug. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, he was a freaking flamethrower. Yeah, he was. You know, he was. and, and of, the, of the spirit and mm -hmm. of this work. And so there was there were these incredible things happening. And even with... Uh, John and 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 with uh, like I said, Chuck Smith Jr. coming to him and saying to him that hey, he's had some struggles in this area, mm -hmm. and um, and some of these guys have dubbed Lonnie. And you answered this question in the last segment. You know, they 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 called him a practicing homosexual, which you clearly say he was not. No, because you lived with the man yeah. for eight years. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you would know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we well, I, I was on and off living with him. Yeah, you know, I wasn't with with him the whole time, but. You know, there was just times and seasons where, um, you know, after the vineyard, uh, I would say probably were th three years into the vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, be it transitioned from a Calvary Chapel to a vineyard. Uh, yeah. And that is well documented. And do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, well, it, Ken Gullix, just to lay that down, Ken Gullix and his, had it three started, churches yeah, called that the were vineyard. called the Vineyard yeah, in the and, SoCal area. And when the Spirit of God fell and Chuck wasn't happy with what was, yeah. where this was going, because he he was more, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept, teacher type yeah. pastor. And so uh, he didn't want that radical swing coming he didn't mind the theology of it, but the practice. Yeah, the practice of it. Made no, him he was, he, yeah, he wasn't having it. So yeah. that's where a dividing line came one day when all the guys got together in a room full of Calvary Chapel ministers. And listen, Chuck was their spiritual father. Yeah. By that time, we're 10 years easily into the, or 11 years into the, the Jesus movement, and Chuck being the real father figure of that. Yeah, and Chuck said today everybody's going to make a decision. You got some of you are going with John, some of you are going to stay with me. Oh man! And that was a choice between kind of word or spirit. Yeah, it was exactly. like you're either going to choose the yeah. word or the spirit. Yeah, which John Wimber was definitely a word man too. It's yeah. not to cut that out. Yeah, but he was word and spirit. Yes, and yes, active yes, practices. Yes, yes, and it was really again the gospel of the kingdom going forward. That's it. You know, and uh, I would say that the greatest thing John brought to the table was the amalgamation of all of what had happened with Lonnie coming into the shepherding movement, which they had a powerful revelation of the kingdom. Yeah. You know, uh, and amalgamating all of those things and John pulling off of that, the kingdom. Yeah. And so it became one of the epicenter points, the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. And so that became noteworthy for the vineyard movement and you know so apropos a mutual friend of ours derek morphew wrote a book called breakthrough yeah on the kingdom oh man and that's man that's one of my favorite people it's <laughs> it's so good i mean it, it's like reading a textbook because yeah. derek is brilliant yeah. yes but he he labeling the kingdom as breakthrough is mm. to me the most perfect title because exactly. it breaks in. Yes, yes. And so it broke into, and these people make these decisions, they yeah. make this decision. You got some of the people going, yeah, no, we want to see the signs and wonders. Yeah, we want to see right. this. And, yeah. and so they follow John Yeah, and, and Lonnie is a part of that. Now. Yeah. Lonnie's a part of that. And you know, listen, um, you're dealing with a very broken person, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we did not, people did not know how to deal with people who had been victimized in yeah. molestations, especially. 
And even in that time period, in the 80s. Yeah. And especially a same-sex molestation. Oh, man. It's it's like anathema. You've been molested yeah, it, by a babysitter. It is yeah. anathema in, in that time period. And even as open and, you know, kind of cool as John and those, it was, and certainly Bob and Chuck wouldn't want to have anything to do with that. You know? Sure. You know, it was just, it, they didn't have the bandwidth for it. Yeah. You know I mean? I don't think anybody did at that time. Exactly. I really don't think anybody could have helped at that time because they didn't know what to do. Knowing now, like me at going to be 69, talking to Alani at 30. Yeah. You know, I mean, it says uh, you got many uh, instructors, but few fathers. Mm. I mean, as a father now, because that's my role now. Yeah. It's more fatherly. Very much so. I, I, I would say that I could take Lonnie and I could move him into a direction that would heal him, that would mm. restore him, that easily. Yeah. Knowing what I know now. Yeah. You've uh, seen it many times. Yeah. Yeah. You've in done deliverance. It. Yeah. Yeah. In deliverance and just being a friend, you know? Yeah. Just being a father figure. Yeah. You know, and just not locking him down on yeah. these kinds of things. I mean, our society has changed so radically in the in from that time period. And uh, again, you know, right before Lonnie died, I told him, I said, I think this is going to be a big issue. To the body of Christ. That was prophetic. It was. I had no idea what I was even yeah. saying. And I regretted it, and I regretted that I never did. And then, of course, you know, that chapter was... I found that chapter, and I read the chapter, and yeah. all of a sudden, all kinds of things have opened up. And as a result of that, this podcast is here. Yeah, absolutely. With me and you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so there's just some so important got, things. He, after a while, you know, there was this narrative about his sexuality that was a, truly a false narrative because yeah, he would uh, not identify as being a homosexual. Right, yes. But it got him sidelined because, again, they didn't know what to do. So, yeah. again, here's now a third father rejection yeah. of just spiritual fathers. Yes, not yes. talking about the, now the yes, two childhood yes, natural absolutely, fathers. Absolutely. So these are five major rejections yes, yes. that this poor man is suffering through yeah. when he— how did that impact him? How did he react oh, to that? You know, the thing that I've, and I've spoken about this many times, and, you know, I think one time, because I was also with another major leader named Harold Bredesen, and mm. having being with Harold put me in circles that I could never have gotten into, but I was with major, major, major leaders in the body of Christ, all through the body of Christ, because he was a father of the charismatic movement. And what it did, it was gave me access to people that I would never, ever have access to apart from Harold. And, but this couple, they ministered to ministers. Yeah. This couple, did. that was their main ministry. They ministered to the top, top, top people in the body of Christ. You know, they, they were mentioning names and, you know, they would be like, yeah, these guys that are on TV and whatnot. I said, hey, I'm interested. When you're ministering to them, what is the thing that you're dealing with the most? Oh, unforgiveness, mm. bitterness. Oh, that's that's the number one ticket yeah. for people in ministry. It's that's the number one. I said, "Wow, how interesting." I well, would support that with yeah. all what I know. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and so like you know, with Lonnie, you know, you have to think in terms like you know, like Lonnie was uh, four years older than me, and so he's the mentor. I'm the mentee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I'm having to walk this thing out with him after, you know, we kind of like, I was at a crossroads when the vineyard was shooting like a rocket ship out, yeah. you know, man, it was, it was the move of God. Mm-hmm. The music was incredible. It was, it influenced Hillsong, Bethel, all of those things. Everything, yeah, yeah. Everything worked off of that move of God. And it all again, comes back down to that little catalytic moment with Lonnie, you know? Yeah. And so Lonnie is looking at this and all these rumors are going and, you know, and I'm his roommate and I'm just going, Hey, no, man, you know, like <laughs> it's all good. Uh, you know, those, those are not my issues for sure. And, you know, sure. like, Hey, God's got his hand on Lonnie. And when all of this kind of came to light and John, you know, they had to move him out from the vineyard. Mm-hmm. I mean, John's got an international ministry now. Yeah. I mean, it is exploding. So, uh, again, not to take away from what you're saying, but again, it had happened because of Lonnie. I mean, yes, it had launched yes. Because of that. You know, it, so that's that was, the enigma of it. Isn't yeah, it? it's really it's such an enigma. Yeah. You know, God would use that broken 
yeah. brother yeah. that God would use. So anyways, I was, man, you know, you're young. You got an anointing on you. You know, this is for me, myself. I was, man, it was a real temptation to go into the vineyard and just say, Lonnie, listen, I'll help you from over here. Yeah. So I, I was at one of those crossroads in my life. You know, do I join that rocket ship mm -hmm. or do I go to a, a dull cave with Lonnie? <laughs> 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 okay, it looks like I'm going to a dull cave with yeah, Lonnie. You know, yeah. like I can't leave my friend behind on this deal. You know, yeah. so I told Lonnie, bro, come on, man. We just, we just figure this thing out, you know. Don't worry about bless it. We'll, you we'll forget that, it. Man. No, Seriously. it's just how it no, is. Bless you, know? you for doing that. I mean, why, really. what, why don't we have more friendship in the body of Christ? Yeah, you yeah, know? really. Like, I, I could care less about anything else. I'm just looking for that friendship. You yeah, know? yeah. You know, I've got some from friends here right now that have been with me for 23 years. And, man, we just love one another. It's not a matter so of strategic partners. What? Yeah, Rob, yeah. Robbie, I'm not concerned about a strategic partner. I want to be your friend, you know? yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. bro, let's just figure this thing out together. So I went to Dullum's Cave. And so I, you know, Lonnie was just so broken, so hurt over this whole thing. So that's when we started ministering another on the streets. Rejection. Yeah, another, another rejection. Yeah, another rejection. I said, dude, let's just get out on the streets and see what's oh, happening. So we, we were down in San Diego, <laughs> and we're hitting the streets, and we're just... I mean, it was super fun, you know? Yeah. We'd go down, go to one of the Italian restaurants, and we'd, then we'd go down on the streets and just meet with all the street people and hang out, and we knew everybody on a first-name basis, you know? It was super fun, super cool. Uh, we were, you know, meeting all kinds of interesting people. And so um, a couple times we went to South Africa. Yeah. You know, you know, can I say something about what you just said? Because there's, there's a, f uh, a guy that I knew that had grown to a pretty prominent ministry, had a, had a very visible major fall, had a very uh, major uh, situation, an adulterous relationship, had a, had a fall. And he made a comment, and then he had a second one. And he made a comment, uh, we were discussing this, and he goes, he goes, well, they're, they're trying to take ministry away from me, and they're trying to take ministry away from me. And I got I to gotta be honest with you, I got really ticked. Yeah. And I looked at him, and I said, the problem with you is you see ministry as you standing behind a pulpit in a church. Whoa. And that's not ministry. Yeah. I said, that's a part of ministry, but you're seeing that as ministry. And I said, and this guy was, you know, leading as a major evangelist. And mm -hmm. I, I'm like, a true evangelist doesn't see the best ministry happening behind a pulpit in a church. Oh. They see it as out on the streets. They see it as with the people who need to hear the gospel, you who go need Robbie. to know it. And I told him, <laughs> I said, if you see that that's been taken away from you, then hit the streets. Go back to where you started yes. and don't lose that part of it Amen, again. Amen, Robbie. That's so good. But we're so focused on this Whew. wooden box sitting up on front. Now they're plexiglass mm -hmm. sitting up in front of the church and going that's that's the goal that's where we're running after mm -hmm. and my, that's where we've missed it john yeah i hear you man and, and you know, so I, lot, you guys going and hitting the streets of san diego mm -hmm. you were recapturing what yeah. the original assignment was from the beginning yeah for Lonnie. Pl plus we were going into south africa but let me just yeah i'm say sorry let me hear that. that i always say it like this you either fall in love with the lord of the ministry or the ministry of the lord Come on. And so, you know, you can get caught up in your own anointing. So good. Yeah. And just, you know, because let me tell you, the anointing of God breaks yokes and it breaks your yoke and you can get addicted to that. Yeah. And you can just get caught in that and for, and forget the love of the Lord. Yeah. So you fall in love with the Lord of the ministry or the ministry of the Lord. And boy, that's good. I've had to like put that thing down a hundred times. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> I got, I got juice you know what I yeah, mean? yeah come on i got juice and come on. I, it's just how it is and that's the lord does that and i've had to lay that thing down a thousand times man yeah. just to say lord i'm sorry i've put this above you and before you and yeah trying to make a name for myself probably you know my own selfish ambition yeah so uh you know so god the door opening up with south africa seems to be to me like the lord saying hey lonnie i'm not done 
Yeah. And if you're if this arena is closed, let me show you another one that's starving for it. Would you agree with yeah, that? Totally. And ha- what would what, what was your yeah. experience? Yeah, there? no, I would say I would say that, you know, and I would say also that uh, and I've got a funny story about Lonnie in South Africa, you know, with me. And this is after you the venue. Tell it. Oh. <laughs> dude, this was hysterical, you know. I Lonnie was very prophetic. Yeah. So he wear priest outfits. <laughs> I said, Lonnie, what do you, and he had long hair, ponytail, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so we were in Johannesburg and we, and I, he's an artist. So he's in. Yeah. The yeah. You know, and he's, he's got his priest outfit on. <laughs> so a friend of mine calls me and says, John, there's a full gospel businessman's type of a meeting down below in the hotel you're staying at. So I told Lonnie, Lonnie, listen, man, let's go down there. And let's just check this out. And this was like 1984, mm. something like that. And the big ministry at that time was Jimmy Swaggart. Mm. Okay. I mean, like that was the, the big show in town. Yeah. And uh, so Lonnie uh, dresses up in a priest outfit and he puts a dollar bill in his, his <laughs> collar. <laughs> I said, bro, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he says, I need to make a statement. <laughs> well, first of all, your your ponytail with the priest outfit's good He's enough. He's already making a statement. Yeah. He says, I, I need to tell the people to be priests of God. He says, wow. and stop making it money changing. Wow. I'm going, Oh dude. <laughs> you know, that's do you have to do this while I'm with you? You know? <laughs> so we go down there and you know, Lonnie says, just be led by the Holy Spirit. You go on one side, and there's like two hundred people in this room. And I'll go, I'll go on the other. So I go, and the guy who called me from actually was staying at my house in San Diego. He's South African. I sat with the people that he, he, were his associates. Mm. So I told Lonnie, Lonnie, I found the people that we're supposed to be with. So, But on each table was like a little letterhead of Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. And Jimmy Swaggart said, if you don't support this ministry, most world evangelism will come to a screeching halt. Okay, we're in South Africa, paid our own way, super dangerous because apartheid was at oh, that yeah. place. It was not, it was that, they were putting necklaces, right then. Yeah. putting necklaces over people and burning them t- yeah. to death. You know, my whole family was, a, uh, you know, abhorred that I would go to South Africa. I said, no, God spoke to me and Lonnie, we're supposed to do this, you know. Yeah. So we go down there and uh, so I said, hey, Lonnie, check this out. Lonnie takes that paper, throws it down on the ground gets on a chair. It's so dramatic, man. <laughs> and says, this day, this will be judged. And he jumps on top of it with both feet. <laughs> I'm going, Dude, pump your brakes, man. You know, he said, that will be judged. And within a month, maybe even shorter, Jimmy Swagger got exposed on national wow. TV. Wow. Wow. For all of that. And it was really the end of his ministry. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, look, Lonnie, could uh, as as we had to walk through this Lonnie had these big gaping wounds yeah where he's and you know we he would emote these things and I have to just kind of say well listen Lonnie you know you gotta that 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 has to come to an end at some point in time where you begin to move in forgiveness and it would be just a real struggle says that uh that the root of bitterness defiles the many yeah Mm. And I'm telling you, I've done enough demon casting out of people. And as I approach these demons, do you have a legal right to be in there? And if they, unforgiveness is one of the big legal yeah. rights. I mean, that's, that's a biggie. Yeah. You know, uh, the terrible parable in Matthew chapter 18 says it all. The Lord himself will give you over to the tormentor mm. if you don't forgive from your heart. Yeah. That has terrified me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I have tried to keep my heart yeah. like in check. Sure. You know, and, and I, you know, I just can't chew the cud of any kind of bitterness or any of that. You have to just let these things go. So I was dealing with and trying to help Lonnie through that process and of the bitterness of the fathers, you know? Yeah. You know, and I haven't, I want you to remember where you're at with that, but I, so many prophets, so many people that God uses in incredible signs and yeah, wonders yeah. have this very wound. Oh, the see the rejection they yes. go through. You, you obviously see, uh, you know, biblical prophets 
people of God in the scripture going through it, being, yeah. being hurt, being mm-hmm. wounded, you know, and, 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 and going through the, it, it, it's, it's, it's so painful to see. And yeah. many dear friends mm-hmm. that have, you know, uh, have struggled in this, the mm-hmm. rejection yeah. and the pain. Awani would say many times, you know, to close friends, you know, they, they, they don't want me. They just want the goodies. Yeah. They want what I bring, but mm-hmm. they don't want me. Mm-hmm. And so there was this deep, deep wound and you, you actually spoke to him. Yeah, no, I know? had to, you know, because yeah. who else is going to do it? You know? He, yeah. You know, he trusted me and we were, you know, we were rolling together and, you know, we, I wanted to see the kingdom of God move. I, that's been my heart my whole life, you know? Sure. And so, uh you know, I wanted to see my friend be able to come and pick up that, you know, that, that mantle again, Yeah. you know, and, and I was really be- contending and believing God for it. And then, you know, we started to, um, have to, well, we started a house church down in San Diego and it, it's, it, it blew up, man. It became so many people coming from all over, you know, just sure. wanting to be part of that and it's really cool people. And, but it's it's kind of David's band, you know, discontent, yeah. in debt, yeah. you know, people that disillusioned, they know they're just like rejected. finding rejected yeah. and they're finding their their way. And so we became a, you know, a sullen little group of malcontents, you know, well, that's mm. not exactly yeah. what God wants either. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, God loves the church mm-hmm. where you know, you, you don't go to church. You are the church. You know, these are God's people. Yeah. We're the ecclesia, the called out ones, right. you know, and God is dealing with that group of people. But, but the leaders, you know, started to like distance themselves from Lonnie. And I saw the, the bitterness growing and growing and growing. It got to a place where it started, I started to see it just spill out on everything that he did. Mm. And I told Lonnie, I warned him. I said, Lonnie, you listen to me going to get quarantined from the body of christ from here on out if you continue Mm. to do what you're doing i said bro in the bitterness the bitterness i said that 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 is bile coming out of you you cannot contaminate the body of christ like that root of bitterness defiles many i said you're defiling people Mm. with this with this anger and this bitterness you cannot do that yeah and it didn't go well (laughs) <laughs> so we receive that huh yeah wow. man we clashed hard on yeah. that i said i have people that i'm responsible for here and so i cannot have that coming on to these people yeah so i've got to separate them out and i'm going to separate them over to this place and these guys over to here because they can be is infectious it's infectious and it, it, yeah. it starts to get you into a mindset and and it's one of the main openings of the demonic yeah you know, it is one of the main, I would say the gateway yeah. for demonic spirits to come and attack you. And, and then, they mentioned to you about targets. like Yeah, you know, it's funny. Lonnie would uh, say to me that he says, I feel like I got a bullseye on me, you know, mm. from, you know, from even as a young boy being victimized like I did. And it's almost like and my sense is that Satan, like a, as with Jesus coming, as with Moses coming, mm trying to kill them before they were born. Yeah. You know, the enemy could sense there was something as a, as a child, there was something on Lonnie. Yeah. Yeah. And so targeting, yeah, a bullseye, a target on him to, to confuse him in sexuality. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. To draw him into. He says it in the book, in that chapter, you know, you can refer back to, I read the chapter in the podcast that I did. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, he, he, he says, look, that guy that molested me was a dark evangelist. Oh, and yeah, he captured me yeah. in that moment. And, you know, people don't realize what that does to your sexuality, to your yeah. thought processes, to your mindset of the entry point of the demonic that never gets dealt with. You know, yeah. we just, you know, put baby powder over everything. Say, did you say mm-hmm. yes to Jesus? Okay, well, that's all good. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mighty Jesus. People hang, have yeah. these things that are hanging on them that never get dealt with. And we just think that just a simple prayer will... Yeah. You know, well, that got that one done. This is where the gospel of the kingdom's got to come back into the church. You know, Jesus, if you preach Jesus as a savior, people are going to get saved. If you yeah. preach him as a healer, okay. Jesus is going yeah. to get, Jesus is going to heal people. If you preach him as a deliverer, Jesus is going to deliver people. Yeah. If you preach him as a provider, 
God's going to bring provision. Yeah. He's all of those things, but we've put them in this little box. Yeah. And God's not going to be put in any more little boxes. Yeah, come on. It's just not going to happen. So, so once things started to progress with Lonnie, you know, I had to, you know, just, we had probably almost two and a half years of wow. non-communication. Wow. And yeah. we did all this stuff together. We were, did all yeah. life together, man. And you were the dynamic duo, really. Oh, dude, we, we rolled hard, you know, and it was, and it was super fun. Yeah. You know, like you know, I don't regret it's any of it. interesting because I, I had conversations with several of the Wimber family members, Carol yeah. Wimber, Tim Wimber, John's son, yeah. and other people. And, and I'm sure this was a case probably, I'm sure, you know, with Chuck, they were all dealing with father wounds. Yeah. You know, John, John was looking to Chuck as a father. Wow. John, John, you know, John was a son of an alcoholic, abusive yes, father, right, yeah. very wounded, yes. very, and you could look and see a similarity with mm. his story. Mm. And so really is something that, that, you know, the Wimber said is that John, he didn't even quite, he was doing the best with what he had, mm. but he didn't quite know what that meant either mm -hmm. because he had suffered that. Yeah. And then he felt the rejection yeah. with Chuck too, for sure. you know, in, in getting sign lined over the signs and wonders and mm. the supernatural mm -hmm. and so there was there was this perpetuating thing too yeah. but these are all broken vessels Whew. that god was using yeah, man. and and but with lonnie especially and so so your relationship it's yeah, two, we, we, two i had to yeah i had yeah. to i had to separate myself from him because of the you know just the things that i was seeing and the damage that i could could see that he would do if yeah if he continued. You didn't want to get infected I, I, with it yeah, either. Yeah, I, I had to separate myself from yeah. him. It was very difficult for me to do I that. Bet. Man. It was I bet. Even that was super painful, you know? But that is love, what you were doing. You know, faithful are the wounds of a friend, deceitful for the kisses of an enemy, man. You just got to tell people what's up, you yeah. know? And in love, not, you know, beat them over the head with stuff. But, you know, just like, you know, it just can't be, you know? Yeah. And so, um, but God used somebody to speak to Lonnie uh, prophetically. Yeah. And had like four, three, four pages of stuff. Boom, 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 boom. Times, dates, addresses, you know, that kind of stuff. But in one of those lines was, you need to reconcile with a guy named John. Wow. So Lonnie calls me. Hey, so this bro. is a prophetic word that yeah. like a prophetic yeah. dude yeah. is yeah. saying yeah. Yeah. To, to, Lonnie. to Lonnie. Yeah. And wow. On paper. Wow. And he says, hey, man, you know, like, let's... Let's sit and talk. I said, oh, fine. I'll meet you in Africa with Derek Morphew. <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> Poor Derek, man. He gets pushed into everything. He's you know? shouldered a lot. He's shouldered a lot, man. You know? I think he still is shouldered yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of my favorites right there. But anyways, yeah, um, yeah so we did that. And uh, this is interesting. Um, you know, we're in South Africa. And I remember Lonnie telling me, uh, this is like in 1989, I'm feeling God's calling me to go down to Brazil because I want to meet with Bishop McAllister down there and mm -hmm. all those guys, those leaders. And um, and immediately the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to go with him. Mm -hmm. Lonnie turned around. And he says, I think you're supposed to go with me. I said, I got it. I'm going. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we ended up going from South Africa, went home for a couple weeks. Lonnie didn't have a place to live. I moved Lonnie into my house in Poway, which was in San Diego, which is in San Diego. And so, um, so we go, we move, I moved him in, we headed down to Brazil. Um, we go down there and uh, it was super fun. Bishop McAllister, powerful. Yeah. You know, God used this guy big time. And, uh, Lonnie said, let's go to Iguazu. So we flew down into Iguazu. It was a great falls. It's like mm -hmm. Niagara fall of Brazil. And, we're stuck in this room because of, like a monsoon hit and we're mm. like in by the Amazon, you know, or close to it. And man, it was like being stuck with Lonnie for like three <laughs> days in a monsoon. He's prophesying. I mean, one after another. I mean, I, I, I was, I was up to here in prophecies with Lonnie. Uh, come on, man. I yeah, cannot yeah, hear yeah, yeah. one more prophecy. And then the last prophecy, the Lord says, He's going to send you a father because you don't know the love of the father. So he's going to send you one. Wow. Boom. The rain stopped. Wow. Yeah. It was like, whoa, what was that? I walk on this little crickety bridge out over the river and I'm just going, Lord, 
what do you mean I don't know the father? Well, my dad died when I was three. Hmm. You know, five kids in my family. I'm a twin. So, you know, my s- sister was, I think, seven. And so seven and under to two, my mom had to raise all of us, you know? Wow. Yeah. So I, did, I grew up without a father. So, you know, you just man up and just make yeah, it work, yeah, yeah. man. You just, that's how it is, you know? And I, but I gleaned off of coaches. I gleaned off of my f- sure. friends' fathers. You know, I, whenever I could find a father, I would draw from them as much yeah. as I possibly could, you know? And, uh, but I didn't know anything different, you know? Yeah. So Lonnie prophesied that I come, we come back and I move Lonnie in. And when you move Lonnie in, you move everybody that's in his entourage of all demonized people. And they're all there and nobody has a job, but me. Okay. This is how we're doing this. (laughs) You're paying the bills, bro. This is what it is, man. (laughs) So we're, uh, you know, we're, we are, I got an opportunity to meet with uh, one of the main leaders, again, Harold Bredesen, of the charismatic movement. And his his daughter, uh, I asked his daughter, would you mind, I would love to meet your dad at some point in time. Because he only lived in Escondido. It was only like 30 minutes from my house. She said, okay, I set up a dinner with you and my dad. I said, Lonnie, you're going to go with me. Let's go meet with Harold. I said, Lonnie, do not prophesy over Harold, okay? <laughs> like, please, this is yeah. a major leader. He says, you don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I said, okay, well, we'll see how that goes. We didn't even get past the praying for the meal, and Lonnie's up and prophesying over Harold, you know? <laughs> but that's how Harold was, too. So yeah. it, it, it worked out fine. And so we, uh, we were praying and prophesying uh, over Harold, and Harold reached up and he grabbed my hand. He said, hi, son. I said, Hi, Harold. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So he went uh, on a trip with uh, Pat Robertson, and then he came back from that trip, and I called him, and I said, hey, the Catholics have done an article about you because he had a tremendous impact because he was one of the fathers of the charismatic movement. And yeah. the charismatic movement had hit the Catholic Church, and so God had really used him. And they named a building after him at uh, Steubenville. And so anyways, he says, uh, he says, son, would you mind going to Prayer Mountain with me? I said, oh, I'd love that, Harold. So I go up there. Harold and I are going up to Prayer Mountain. He turned and he said, son, the Lord just spoke to me that I'm to be your father. Wow. Honestly, I didn't even know I had a father need. Yeah. I mean, it just went whoop. Yeah, yeah. I, I traveled for the next 15 years. And he was the same age as my dad. Yeah, he was the same age as my dad. Harold and Lonnie ordained me. Wow. You know, Harold married me and my wife. Wow. Who Lonnie had introduced her to me. And so, you know, uh, I had a father void filled that I had no idea yeah. that needed to be filled. Mm. And I, I'm telling you now, you know how you have a thousand instructors, but few fathers? Yeah. I love being a father. Yeah, it's good. Oh, man, I it's agree. just like easy, you know? I agree. It's just easy. It's so good. You know, with that, uh, with with that all happening, you you and, and you, you and Lonnie obviously reconciled, mm-hmm. and just just in a minute or two, just what was it? Uh, you know, you're 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 seeing your friend die. You're yeah. seeing him. He's got full yeah, blown that, AIDS. He's in yeah. pain. He's in agony. Yeah. You wanted him to record. You said, you know, to, to yeah. say some things to put. So but he was too weak. But he was too weak yeah. in his pain. Once Lonnie passed, and mm-hmm. and you know, God had even you, you you told me you said the Lord spoke to you, and and then you got there, and your wife, and I think somebody else at the funeral all had words about Samson. Yeah, I, how did you relate that well, to Lonnie? Uh, how do you feel like that? <laughs> Lonnie and I were driving up. Uh, it, it's so interesting because uh, we were watching my video, my wife and I, and you know, we're like on whoa, like. There's a thousand people that viewed this thing. Well, now well, it's now like it's way yeah, more than that. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't know anything about these things, yeah, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but um, boom, the video popped up of me preaching at Lonnie's funeral, mm. and I hadn't seen that in thirty years. Wow. Yeah, it's like, and then my wife, and then Chuck. You know, we were watching it. I was just going, these algorithms are following us somehow. I don't know how this is wow. all working, you yeah. know. But it just popped up right on her, her iPad, and as we were watching it as we were talking this. And so anyways, I, uh, we were driving up one day, me and Lonnie were, it was probably 1987. And, 
uh, Ben Crandall, who was a powerful voice to the Pentecostal movement at that time. Mm -hmm. We were, Lonnie says, I feel a Samson anointing on me as we're driving up to the uh, National Convention of, you know, TV people, whatever that is, Mm -hmm. up in Anaheim Convention Center. And Lonnie says, I feel like Samson. I said, Lonnie, you're delusional. Stop, (laughs) man, you know? So we go up there, and I'll never forget, uh, Ben Crandall wanted to meet Lonnie. Mm -hmm. And so me and Lonnie and Ben, we meet, and he says, Lonnie, I feel a strong prophetic word over you. He says, Lonnie, there's a Samson anointing upon you, and you're to light the tails of the foxes. You know, Lonnie looked at me, he said, I told you. Wow, (laughs) wow, wow. So, you know, I cried out to the Lord. I said, um, I told my wife, honey, don't tell me what you're going to say. I want to get the word of the Lord for what I feel like it is with Lonnie. I won't ask you what you're getting. So... I spoke. That's what God gave me. The yeah. whole story of Samson and how ultimately he got redeemed. Yeah, come on. And he killed more Philistines in his last yeah venture than ever before. My that wife got the is same a word, isn't yeah, it? For now, yeah. And my wife got the same word, and Chuck had the same word. Yeah. I ask you that story because we're right now. That perfectly lines up prophetically with what's happening. I believe right now. Yeah. A movie with Lonnie in it. Mm-hmm. Books now telling Lonnie's story right. in his own words. Yep. And so now there's a voice almost from the grave. Yes. yes. More powerful. It's so powerful. And so this is that Samson moment. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I believe that. That's why I, yes. I kind of set the question up for you. Because yeah. what is God doing now? Mm-hmm. And what is happening now? Mm-hmm. Why is all this taking place? And where are we headed? What do you sense? I sense that we're on the cusp of a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I think that there's an awakening that is starting to percolate. Mm. And we're starting to see it move with great power and great anointing. Nobody's fingerprints can be on this. That's right. This is not personality driven other than the person of Jesus. Come on. Period. Yeah. Everybody get your little fingers off of this thing. Yeah. And let the Lord do what he's going to do. This personality-driven thing that mm. we've made Christianity, yeah, where there's a money-changing table over everything. The brands, yeah, brands. Well, our brand, you know what? Wow, man. Yeah. You know, I, and, and I'm I'm afraid that a lot of these prophetic people and people that are all hurt and broken, man, get back in love with Jesus. Come on, and let Jesus heal you. Come on. It started with Him. Get back to Him. Yeah. Get back to the simplicity of the gospel. Yeah. Stop this nonsense. You know, I heard it said like this. The the it left Jerusalem as a belief system, went to Greece, became a philosophy, went to Rome, became an institution, came to America, became a business. What? Wow. We got money changing tables on every corner. And it's all through the music industry, all through everything. You want that oil to stop? Yeah. You wow. want the anointing to stop? Start setting up your little conference tour, your concert tours. Go ahead. Just go ahead and do it. Count on that oil to stop. And he said something to you, the, the, your spiritual father, about three things that all have G's on them. Yes. The well, it, he, he was actually one of my professors. And, and I had this old... Texas, you know. I like him already. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, he looked like he needed head shears to cut his eyebrows. I mean, <laughs> hair looked like Bozo the Clown. Yeah. Hair coming out of his ears. Old school, Baptist, you know, got his PhD in New Testament theology and Old Testament uh, languages. Dr. Metzger. And he'd come in there and say, Boys. Stay away from the girls, the gold, and the glory, and you'll do just fine. That's a good word. That's it, man. Yeah. Can we just do that? Can we just get our fingerprints off of everything? Can we not just say, come, Lord Jesus? Do you want to be used of God in this season? Be prepared to be a no name. Be prepared to be just another voice that is going to add to the voices that God is going to be. God's going to raise up people. Do you need a title? Really? Is that what you're looking for? Do you need apostle, blah, 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 blah? 
Do you need pastor? Blah, 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 blah. Come on. Where's that? Yeah. Where's that in the scriptures? These are functions. Just function in it. Don't worry about it. People know who you are. You don't have to tell everybody that yeah. you have to have this title in front of you. Just be who God has called you to be. Let the Spirit of God move through you. He uses the simple and the base to confound the wise. That's our claim to fame, right, yeah, Robbie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, man. I mean, who are we? We're nobodies. Yeah. That knows somebody. His name's you know, Jesus. <laughs> it's interesting because you have that, that, that thing that was Paul, even himself, the Apostle Paul, starts off ranking himself as an apostle, yes. equal to the other apostles. Yes. But by the end of his ministry, he's saying, of sinners yes. of whom I am chief. Exactly. It's you know, exactly. there's something about that place of humility yep. and surrender. That's it. Of I don't need the title. I don't need the I don't need yeah. the gold. I don't yeah. need the glory. I don't need the yeah. girls. Yeah. I don't need all this. Yeah. But something has captured the state of the church in the United States right now, yeah. where I'm so concerned, yes. is the bigger the better. The success is based on how big the building is, how big the influence is, yeah. how many people are watching, and the sacrifice. Yeah. Literally, many pastors have told me, bringing me in and going, mm -hmm. bring me everything you got, but be careful. I don't want to lose anybody. And I'm like, bro, let me tell you something right now. You can't Oof. be there and expect the move of God. You can't tell God, yeah. I want I want everything you have, mm -hmm. but I can't lose anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, because at this point you're then serving the people rather than serving the master, yes. rather than serving yes. the lordship of Christ. Yeah, I love that scripture out of the book of Jeremiah. It says, You have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Mm. And you've built cisterns for yourself that can hold no water. Wow. Systems of men are not going to be able to prevail in yeah. this time period. Period. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Your little system's going to collapse under the weight of what's coming financially over our nation. Yeah. And the judgments that are about ready to fall with a plumb line dropping it straight on the church right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. So better get ready for the shaking because God is calling people to come that worship him in spirit and in truth, both. And it has to be now. So how do we respond to that revival? How do we respond to where we're not controlling? Like even the person right now who may be watching this and going, man, I've, I've slipped into that control. Maybe there's pastors, leaders yeah, that yeah. are watching going, I've slipped into that. I've mm -hmm. been working for the name for myself. Name recognition, <sighs> clicks, man, likes yes, on my yeah. social media, yeah. serving that rather than serving you know, the message that I've been mm -hmm. called to. How do, we, how do we get a part of this revival? How do we become a part of that move of God? I, I would say start with repentance. Mm. Come out of that crazy thought process. That is nothing up but the world and carnal. It has no reality base in the kingdom of God. When it's wrapped around you, you can be guaranteed it has nothing to do with the kingdom. The kingdom of God and the power of the Holy Spirit allows you to get free from yourself. Mm. The greatest hindrance to God consciousness is self-consciousness. And, you know, listen, you wonder why you're burnt out? Billy Graham says, you're, if your output is more than your intake, your upkeep will be your downfall. Mm. You better take a look at this and start to seek the Lord while he may be found. We don't have time. We're on the clock. This thing is ticking. And we are going to see a mighty, mighty move of God. And it's pretty much going to be outside of the church structure. Guarantee it. Now, the Lord gave you a word when you were in San Diego about something that was going to happen in a particular college town. Oh, man, I'll tell you. I, and then now. Yeah, yeah. So nine years ago, I was, I was planting tomatoes in my backyard because I love doing that kind of stuff. And I'm in my backyard nine years ago, and I'm, I'm just singing and working away and crying out to the Lord. And the Lord said, boom, I am going to pour out my spirit in College Station. And I'm going to put a fire up the I-35 corridor. I had no idea where College Station was. I had wow. no idea about an I-35 corridor. Wow. I don't know anything, nor do I care about those <laughs> things. So I called a buddy of mine in Texas. And I said, Peb, do you know anybody in College Station? He said, I do. Hmm. He says, uh, and they, there were these brothers Nick, uh, that lived in College Station. And they were like house church guys. And 
you know, I just, I, I flew down there. I went and got a ticket, flew down there and said, the says the Lord, you know, yeah. dude, I'm so off on my timings. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to happen like immediately, you know? And I said, guys, I, I'm, t and I told him what God showed me and what he spoke to me. Cause I, I don't have any motivation to do that kind of stuff. It's just not in me to do that unless I was compelled by the Lord. So, uh, I have a friend, his name's Matt Whalen. Actually, he's here with me right now, but uh, Matt had a ministry in Boston, and then he ended up moving to College Station. Uh, actually, mm. Bryan, which is next to College yeah, Station, you right know. There. And uh, when Matt told me what he was doing and where he was going, I was just going, here it is, right there. Mm. Here's my ground zero mm. for what God's about ready to do. So we've been doing these things called Jesus Gatherings. And powerful. We just did one three weeks ago in College Station in a barn. We beat that ground so hard. The Spirit of God came on us. There was weeping and wailing. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, you know, because this video that I did has gone out, I'm getting leaders from everywhere calling me, you know. And so one of the main leaders of YWAM called me. And uh, his name's Danny Lehman. Danny said, mm -hmm. John, the Lord is moving on these kids in YWAM. You know, he's got, I don't know, 60,000 kids in YWAM. Mm -hmm. He says, I've got a, a, a group of them here, and these kids will go and press into God for three, four hours. He mm -hmm. says, dude, I'm good for an hour. And then I'm yeah. like tapped out, yeah, you yeah. know. And I saw the same thing down in College Station three weeks ago, where these guys would not stop. They just kept pressing and pressing. Mm. Boom, it spills over on the, co the campus of Texas A&M. Yeah. And man, that goes off. Yeah. And so, you know, we're sensing, whoa, this could be that, what the Lord was speaking about, you know. Yeah. I want to see what the Lord is about ready to do. And, uh, man. You know, I'm hearing stories like that yeah. all over the world right, right. now. Right. You know, we, we were just uh, in Asbury yes. and went up to just, uh, friends, uh, Laura and Larry Randolph. Larry's yeah. a real prophet mm -hmm. and uh, dear friends. And and uh, took Laura and went up to Asbury. Mm. And while we were there, you know, and of course that, that whole thing had just been, it had probably just been a couple of weeks mm -hmm. that had been going on. Yeah. Now, by this time that I got there, I noticed that uh, it was all student led mm. originally. Yeah. But then the faculty had stepped in by this time. And they were, and a lot of people that were doing, uh, have serving in the ministry team and the prayer team mm -hmm. for people were telling me, they said, as soon as the faculty stepped in, everything shifted. Yeah. It changed. It wasn't as spirit led. It was, yeah. it, it, the feeling and the atmosphere had yeah. shifted and it changed. And there's this sense of somehow, a, a we got to navigate this yeah. or it's going to get crazy yeah. as if God getting crazy. Yeah. And you know what, John, my sense is, is it's a little bit of the reaching out to steady the ark. Mm -hmm. And we know what happened to that guy. Ooh, yeah. You know, that and, did, and, and well. versus, versus Obed Edom saying, yes, bring the ark to me. Yeah. Put it in my house. Mm -hmm. David, King David sees Obed Edom getting blessed, his yes. socks getting yes. blessed off. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a word in that for us. I do. I Either do. we're going to reach out and try to steady control or, or put our hand mm. on mm. the rocking ark because mm. we don't like the way it's looking and mm. it looks unsteady, it yes. looks uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Or we say, let me house it. Yes. Bring it here. Exactly. I'll house it. Yes. I'll release it. Yes. I'll let it rip. Yes. I'll let it go. Ooh, that's a good, that's that's, a good word right that's there. Where, well, the, that's, that's what God's been speaking to me. Those are the two responses we're at right now. That was the response Chuck was at. Mm -hmm. That was the place that, that Wimber was at. Yeah. There is a a mandate right now that either you're going to say, I'll house it messy, mm -hmm. messed up, jacked yeah. up, twisted yeah. from my natural yeah. perspective. Yeah. But God, if it's your chaos, yeah. then it's perfect. Yeah, and I do believe God is going to, that we're going to see a shaking so intense. People don't know how intense a shaking I agree. A collapse financially. I mean... Okay, who's going to pay for that building? Who's going to pay for that AC? Who's going to pay for that heating bill? Who's going to pay for that parking lot to get striped? Who's going to pay for on and on and on? My question, are you more concerned about your 401k and how that's looking in the organization? Are you ready to step out of whatever that collapse is going to bring? And are you still a pastor? Are you still an evangelist? Or do you need 
the, the accolades of what that system has done for you. Come on. You better wake up and snap out of it now. Come on. This is serious business. It is. The shaking is coming. It is. If you're not in it, God's going to bypass you. And, or is it for such a time as this that God has called you to the kingdom? These are your decisions that you're going to have to make. This is no joke time. We're, God is not playing. He is not playing. We're, we are going to see a proliferation of an organic life of God move like we've never seen before. There's thousands and thousands of houses that need to open. There's thousands of you who have had a pastoral kind of a call, a shepherd's heart, that you could shepherd a little group of people, that you could help disciple people further along. People are going to get out on the streets. What about all of those come that are going to come in? What about all the Mormons that are coming in, the LGBTQ community coming in, all the Jews coming in, all of the different drug addicts that are about ready to come in? An influx of hundreds of thousands that yeah. are going to come in. Who's going to help disciple, strengthen, help deliver, help do all the things that need to happen with these yeah. people. You know, when I was pastoring, uh, I planted a vineyard church mm. in the Chicagoland. Mm. And we were at a time where the spirit began to move and we began to see a move of God take place. God began to stir. We're seeing gang members. Like I, People are like, How, where did you learn to work with radical Muslims yeah. in the most dangerous countries in the world? I, it's on the streets of Chicago, man. <laughs> wow. Working with gamer, their ideologies aren't that different. I <laughs> yeah. mean, the way they operate, they, they operate out of control by fear, mm -hmm. dominance, control. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was all of that. Mm. And... As we began to see this move of God, we began to lose all these beautiful, wrecked human beings are coming mm -hmm. to Christ. And that made us start to lose our, our middle class mm -hmm. who were paying the bills. Mm -hmm. And that started to make it, but the yeah. it was a move of God. Wow. And I, I, I was, I started going and said, Lord, you know, we got to, we got to pay the electricity. We got to mm -hmm. pay the, yeah. we got to pay the mortgage. Yeah. Gotta, and I started, and the Lord spoke to me and said, is this your house or mine? Right on, man. He's like, if it's my house, I take yeah. care of it. Yeah. Why, what are you worried? Why are you worried about this? That's right. Is this your house or That's is it right. mine? That's right. And I said, Lord, it's yours. And forgive me. Forgive me for making it mine. Robbie, you jump out of more planes hoping there's a parachute <laughs> than anybody I know. <laughs> well, this is the You're truth. You're scary, bro. And it's got, we got to get to that place. Yeah. If I lose this building, so what? Yeah, who cares? I don't care about the building. I want the move of Almighty God. Mm. I want the sovereign outpouring of the go. power of His Holy Spirit. Let the building go. Let's go That's meet it. under trees, yeah, man. Who Isn't cares? that how it started? That's it, man. You Let's know, go that... meet out on the in the on the street corners. Mm. Let's go meet where 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 in the you know the Iranians are starting churches in 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 you know cornfields and in vineyard fields and because mm. because it's against the law to meet any where else That's amazing Absolutely bro we we've, amazing. we've got to we've got to learn from them now yeah I, totally I'm, it, I'm with that and and that's that's where that's where that all western mindset needs yes. to shift man i mean we need to be looking at that underground church and start taking notes hear it that's we need and we better get ready for persecution and i'm not talking be unfriended from facebook i just got unfriended from facebook <laughs> snap out of it yeah. that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about yeah. there's some things getting ready to happen are you prepared? Yeah. Right. Is your Come heart on. ready for what it's going to cost you to walk with Jesus? Really? Come on. You know, people, yes, I just want to see revival. Really? Do you know do you know what that requires? Man, it's messy. Yeah. Yeah. It is messy. You have to walk people through stuff. Man, when there's babies, new babies in around yeah they had messy diapers you know they keep you up at night you just gonna, up, yeah, poop, yeah all of it. yeah you gotta feed them and uh, you know oh what's wrong with you you know yeah i mean you got messes yeah it's just how it is but man is it glorious yeah we'll take it yeah man we you will know, take it as we wrap this segment up i i just want to ask you if you would just I just sense there's some pastors and leaders and even just some people just in their own personal walk they're mm. watching right now mm. and going, I've been putting my hand to it and I've been worried about it and I've been taking that on and, and maybe just speak to them. You've spoken to them really already, but even just pray with them to, mm. uh, to, to repent and how to repent, how to mm. pray and how to turn around, you know, uh, praying and repentance. I mean, praying, asking for forgiveness. The repentance is to turn from it. Yes. That's saying, right. I'm sorry. is not enough. Yeah. I've got to turn yes, from yes, that. That's it. That's it. Robert. And so 
what just whatever the Lord's lead you and how to pray or how to lead them into prayer, whatever God's speaking to you okay. right now. Yeah. You know, honestly, I think that it starts. The kids are always asking me, because I've almost been 50 years in the Lord. They said, well, how do you stay, like, on point with the Lord? Like, for 50 years. Yeah. I, and I've got just one answer. I'm in love with Jesus. So good. <laughs> I just fell in love with Jesus, so you know? Good. And I would say to you, come back to your first love. Mm. Man, I don't care what you have to do, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches. It's choked out the fruitfulness. Maybe some of these things we've been talking about, roots of bitterness and all of those kinds of things, it's got to be peeled back now. Just come back to the simplicity that Jesus loves you. He's got a plan for you. His hand is upon you. There's been an, a call over your life. Get back to that place where God met you originally over that call. Let the Holy Spirit come and meet with him in that secret place with him. Come back to your first love. Yeah, It's the most critical thing you can do right now. So let, let, it's okay if I pray, Robert? Please, please. Father, we just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, God. Lord, I just pray for all the leaders that might be watching this right now. I pray for all the, the um, elders and people that have been involved in ministry that are now out of ministry because they're so disillusioned. Lord, I just pray right now in Jesus' name, God, Use all of those moments of disillusionment, of brokenness, of just, you know, bad taste in their mouth. Let it all just sweep away mm. under the magnanimous love that you have for them. Not for what they can do for you, but because they are with you. Yes, Lord, I just pray that right now, God. Would you just bring like a rain, like this rain over their lives, the rain of God. Oil from heaven, just come over you right now. Mm. Lord, just touch their hearts. Touch, touch their minds. Still their minds. Still their minds. Still those demonic voices right now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I just proclaim freedom and the shalom of God. I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Shalom, shalom, double emphasis. Mm. Whose mind is stayed on thee. I bless you, precious remnant out there right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Woo! <laughs> it's Come so on. good. You know, just in closing and saying, I've been through the torture. I've been, I've been arrested three times in, in prison in Afghanistan, once in Russia. And I can tell you this, hmm. you come out of that seeing the value of the relationship with Jesus amen. and everything else just Pales. doesn't matter. Pales, man. And I pray that we all get to that place. And just let me say to you, yeah. as we are in closing, prepare right now by just yes. getting as close to Jesus, having yeah. that intimacy with him, pursuing yes. him, and in a community that's that. And as we close, stay radical Amen. and get more radical. Amen. Thanks Good for job. joining, John. Thanks, bro. So happy you're here. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you guys. This week's podcast is brought to you by Robbie Dawkins Ministries. Do you know someone who would be impacted by today's episode? Share it with them and let us know what they think. Subscribe or follow this podcast so you don't miss our next episode. You can also leave us a review, like, comment, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until next time, stay radical.